So you have a tenant rate and your love overlanding. You had plans to do it big on the trace and some super glamping. One idea, deep news and reviews, a podcast the first rate and here just for you. You don't have to think about it, join us and be about it. Something interesting we want to hear about it, come on let's talk about it. Welcome to Waypoint Overlands Random Waypoints Podcast. Sponsored by Midland. Communication for every adventure. The industry leader in radio communication technology and innovation for over 50 years. Sponsored by MyMedic. Sponsored by Tembo Tusk. Sponsored by Shower Pouch. Sponsored by DeMoss Collective. Mission built and made for mobility. Sponsored by BrewTrack. Sponsored by Hard Impact Designs. Always remember, the opinion you follow should be your own. Just consider the things stated here to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Hey, what's up, Mike? Oh, Phil, another day here in uh, Nomad Land. I'm parked at a um, uh, Cracker Barrel restaurant in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, if you can believe that. Doing some work here on the computer. I know the Cracker Barrel that you're talking about. Uh, have you gone in and actually ate anything? We actually did. We went in and had a little breakfast and some uh uh, un, uh, unlimited all refill coffee this morning. So I'm a little wired up. Okay. Um, let's get right into it. We, we both, um, we'll get into it a little later, but our travel plans caused this particular podcast to be a little short this week. So let's get right into it. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start with the viewer question. Okay. I didn't realize it, but, uh, on several podcasts, we have discussed about the national parks and we've used the words backcountry and wilderness. And I was asked, what's the difference? So uh, hmm. you want to take this one or you want me to take this one or what? Uh, well, let me just understand what, before we move forward here. So the difference between, are you referring to like, when we use the words backcountry, so to me, I'll, I'll let you answer it as well, but to me, backcountry, so wilderness and backcountry are similar. Um, we, we talk a lot on the podcast a lot about national parks and BLM land, and then there's uh, national monuments. There's, there's a lot of different designations of federal land out there. So um, backcountry uh, in, in my view, when I say backcountry, oftentimes that means I'll give you an example. That's probably the easiest way to describe it. So if you go to Glacier National Park, as an example, and you hike to, um, you know, there's a couple of trails that I've hiked in there up to the glaciers. Um, that's backcountry. That's off. Uh, in, in many cases, in many places, you need permission uh, and check in to go do some of those activities. So um I'm not sure where you are referring to this. So why don't you give me your view on this subject? Well, this is a question I could have just quickly answered for him and moved on. But I decided it was good to have it on the podcast because we basically use those two words interchangeably a lot. And we both mm -hmm. use them incorrectly a lot, as well as most people. Um. But like you were saying, when the National Park is using that term or other federal agencies that uh, partition off land through America, they mean something very specific. When they're referring to backcountry, it's basically any place that you can drive to. Uh, ski huts, cabins, uh, log cabins, uh, hiking campgrounds, things like that. When you're talking about wilderness, that's a designation that basically is almost the same as backcountry, but it bans certain technologies like cars, bikes, chainsaws, uh, cell towers. Uh, you can still have a stove. You can still uh, backpack in with a horse. 
Matter of fact, that's a very common thing that people use as uh, backpacking horses for this type of thing. Um, so, so that's the, interesting. I would have called the opposite to that. So I'm learning something here on the podcast today. And that's why I wanted to say it on here, because when I was reading, when I, I was, I only read about it to verify what I was saying, but I thought I knew it all. And I was, I had it flipped around also. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Uh, but, and it's also good to know that because there's certain requirements on visitors in particular parts of the park, whether it be the front country, mm -hmm. back country or wilderness, it has a lot to do with, uh, the reservation system that's involved. Um, I'm sure, you know, that like when you're going through wildernesses, you have to get a, a special permit specifically for that. You have to give them the the days and times that you're going to go and potent, uh, potentially you have, your name has to go into a lottery. Sometimes that lottery is once every three or four months. And then there's like backcountry in Moab where, um, there's a lottery that actually happens every single day. You have to show up yep. in the morning and it's pretty much first come, come serve, but it is a lottery. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I think we answered that pretty good. I have a, a lot more information, but uh, that's the part that I felt was important to get out there. Yep. Um, do you have any plans in the this year to see the 2024 Perseid meteor shower? I don't even know what it is, Phil, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Well, it started last week. And it lasts until September, and August 12th is considered the best day to view the shooting stars. So it's the meteor that periodically comes back where it's all those shooting stars, and you can practically see it anywhere where it's dark. And that's the key. That's the only reason I'm really mentioning it, is that this is something that uh, I think you should have on your bucket list to at least see once in your lifetime, and also... That if you're going to do this, you know, you can't just go outside and see it. You need to be somewhere like a, a dark sky. Uh, then it becomes very visible. And my travels in the next couple months are going to take me largely through uh, western Montana and northern Idaho. So uh, I, I, I get, there's a plenty of dark sky areas up here for sure. So I'll have to take a look for that. And, and I left it real general like that dark skies. Because there's between 150 shooting stars per hour with this particular, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's visible across the entire U.S. So there's no specific location you need to be in other than it be some kind of dark sky, uh, a place with very limited light. And like I said, if you find one of those places, you do, you won't need any kind of visual aids or anything like that. It, it's very clear. It just needs to be dark. You can't watch it in a city. Um, so we got that out of the way. And man, Mike, did you hear about the father and daughter that died in um, the Canyonlands this week? They no, ran out of water. I did not uh, hear that. Yeah, a father and his adult daughter were found dead Friday at Canyonlands National Park in Utah after the pair got lost while hiking and ran out of water in triple-digit temperatures. Jeez, I, I, I tell you, um, one of the things that is probably the most important to think about at this point, uh, having spent a lot of time out west recently, and as you know, uh, we hooked up a couple days ago, it has just been incredibly hot i mean incredibly hot in multitude of states in fact if you look at a, we were looking at a, a map last night of the of the united states a heat map and most of the country is in excessive heat in many cases over uh, into triple digits fahrenheit so um you don't realize how quickly that affects your body and how much water you really actually need to consume to stay even at a break even point. So uh, people that are doing outdoor activities like hiking or, or even things on the water, like kayaking or um, any kind of outdoor activity for that matter, have to be extremely careful. And even at high elevation, by the way, which, 
which also dehydrates you even faster. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I've been in places like Colorado and people are wondering, why am I dizzy? Why, why am I panting? And they think of everything other than water because it's a 50 or 60 degree day. Sure. So uh, dehydration can happen without minus the heat. Uh, also, you know, you have a lot of people, hey, I'm at home under the air conditioning. I don't know the science behind it, but you can be inside under air conditioning and you still need to be drinking water. You will, you can dehydrate at mm -hmm. home. Uh, when I was living in Vegas, it used to happen to people all the time. Yeah. Uh, like you said, we, we've been hanging out recently and the, the constant cry amongst everybody is, Hey, did you drink some water, drink some water. And when somebody drinks some water, they're, they're handing it to other people. You want some <laughs> too, you want some too. And we're practically doing nothing. So yep. it's not about whether you you're doing something or not. You need to keep yourself hydrated. It, it's the thing that will take you down physically fastest. So, yeah, he was a 50, 52 year old man. He was with his daughter, 23 years old from uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So, mm -hmm. wow. Um, I don't know if that was his only daughter. I don't know if his wife was still alive. That's just a sad story. Yeah, a terrible story for sure. And, and it's been it's been bad with this heat all around. Uh, there were two deaths uh, in Snow Canyon State Park in Utah on Friday. Uh, on July sixth, a motorcyclist died, and a second was hospitalized while driving through Death Valley as the temperature soared to one hundred and twenty eight. Uh, a 50-year-old hiker from Texas died while attempting to reach the south rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona. We already spoke about that one last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was a, another 50-year-old hiker from Texas that died uh, while attempting to reach the south rim of the Grand Canyon. So people are are dropping like flies. This is something to be serious, to be taken seriously. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mike, before we get into what the future holds for me and you, I got I I have something I'm gonna kind of throw at you in a second. Maybe you know about this, maybe you don't. Um, the US Supreme Court's Chevron doctoring ruling was loosened for EP, uh for the EPA. And I was wondering, do you think that will affect the overland industry in any way? Because in this particular Supreme Court, uh, maybe I should tell you what the, sh the the Chevron Doctrine is a decision that required courts to let federal agencies make rulings on ambiguous points in the law that had not been covered by Congress. So to get right to the point, uh, things like the EPA, the FDA, these agencies have mm -hmm. pretty much been able to legislate and and make laws and make judgments about actions that people do uh, over the court. That's and right. This, this is basically taking a lot of that, not all of it, but a lot of that power away. And the particular court case that came up was how the EPA was forcing aftermarket uh, companies to do things that they actually didn't have the power to do. So right. I'm I'm thinking it's going to really open up uh, a lot of innovation because there was a lot of innovation stifled because you couldn't even get started. Yeah, I heard I heard some discussion about that at an Overland Expo, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, whatever. And there, there's a there was a lot of effect on. Um, you know, it actually was on OEM stuff and on aftermarket products for, uh, in particular, they were talking about for vehicles. But, you know, it brings up a larger discussion um, because, <laughs> not to dive into politics, but, you know, that's where we always end up on this podcast somehow. But the, the, those three letter agencies in the United States have a lot of power. Just about any three letter agency that you can think of. Um, so that not only is, uh, is, an interesting thing when it comes to what you're talking about, like parts and um, different designs and things for, uh, in our case, vehicles for overlanding. 
but also has to do with the land and has to do with environmental things and oil and natural gas and uh, electricity and, you know, everything from windmills to solar to dams. Right. So there's all, there's all sorts of stuff going on. And obviously we're in a, um, uh, a, a, what I'm going to call a very significant, potentially changing year here in 2024. I agree with that. Um, I keep up with what's going on in the Supreme court, whatever rulings, every single ruling, I literally have a feed that comes in to me about what's going on with them. And I have learned that you can't just look at that particular case. You have to look way, way mm-hmm. bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. the, the case that's going before you is a trivial case, but in law, you need what's called a precedent. Yeah. And sometimes it it's that particular case that is the easiest way to make that precedent. That's right. And I believe this is a setup to as it is doing, lessen the powers of these agencies for big business. Yeah. So you're going to see a lot of moves made off of this little small precedent that probably means nothing to anybody right now, but it's, it's going to be major changes across the board. And it's not going to just be in aut- the automotive industry or it's going to be across the board. Yeah. I, agreed. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. And I guess before we get into what our, our next um, uh, topic is, talking about where our plans are going to take us, uh, we would be remiss to skip over uh, a couple things for our listeners out there. Number one, uh, Phil and I got a chance to get together a couple days ago in White Salmon and ha- hang out and visit White Salmon. And we visited Hood. Uh, and... Um, uh, that was cool. We stayed at Moscow Moto, so we, you know, we we should we should mention these things, right? Yeah. So, um, let me kind of interview you on that because oh, okay. this was your first time there. So, uh, give your your raw opinion on it about whatever part of it. Just just give me your raw opinion of it, of White Salmon, Oregon. First thing I would say is if you guys have not visited that part of Oregon and Washington, you need to. Uh, it is an amazing scenic area, uh, you know, on my travel out of there after Phil went back home, uh, we went up the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, where am I, what am I saying here? The gorge, uh, uh, the gorge, uh, Columbia river, the Columbia river gorge. And that drive is amazing coming out of white salmon all the way, you know, coming, uh, East. So, you know, if you haven't visited this part of the world, you really need to, uh, white salmon turned out to be a funky little cool town. Uh, I really enjoyed that area. And, uh, Phil and I got to see a bunch of water sport activity on the, on the river there. Uh, I happened to be going on, on a, on a nice, uh, beautiful, hot, but beautiful day. And, uh, it was good to hang out. We met some, um, we met some, uh, British, uh, couple on motorcycles that um, are staying, we're staying at Moscow Moto. In fact, that we're going to be seeing them in a couple of days. Uh, they're also coming to uh, this event that we're heading to. Oh, okay. They were, so that, they were still thinking about it. Yeah, they're, 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 they're going to be coming. Cool. So, uh, you know, and we've been hanging out with my uh, buddies, uh, uh, Deidre and uh, Reyes from Exploring Still Connected, which I'm still traveling with right now. We've had actually, he had an interesting journey since uh, leaving. It was funny. I ran into a uh, a buddy of mine that is from Baja. This is how small the world is, guys. I ran into a friend uh, who's from Vancouver. She came down uh, on her way by, stopped. I gave her a pin to check me uh, to stop and say hi yesterday. She stopped. This is somebody I camp with down in Los Frailes, down in Baja. Uh, stopped by, and uh, Deidre Reyes and I were camped at a... You can't make this stuff up. We were camped at a preschool and and the connection is this is a, something i want to kind of mention uh I mean, we probably don't we probably could have a whole podcast talking about nomad life and being on the road and 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 experiences that you can have and and just the way life happens if you let it but um on our way to um where we are now which is in Coeur d'Alene, uh i had to stop at william sonoma in downtown um spokane uh, which is interesting 
interesting because when I had I had bought an ice cream machine, and I didn't realize that Williams Sonoma was quite in a sort of a high end luxury mall right downtown. So we went to pick it up with two very large overland rigs, which was an interesting scene in itself. I had to park in a loading zone, and I went running into the building. And anyways, and then um, Reyes and Deidre bought a new motorbike. So these are the things that you do while you're on the road. But they bought a new motorbike, but they didn't have a rack on the uh, front of uh, or any way of carrying the motorbike on their rig. So we had to stop and buy, went to um, uh, Har- Harbor Freight and bought a motorcycle ramp and then got to this guy's house. In any case, his daughter owns this preschool. So to make a long story short, um, he's like, hey, why, you know, why don't you guys uh, go stay at the preschool uh, if you want to camp in town here? So we did we did that. Uh, in any case, so uh, Sarah came ended up coming out and visiting us at this preschool it was kind of cool because we had uh the use of the bathrooms inside and and uh we got to plug into the side of the building and everything so these are the th- weird things that happen when you're on the road full time and um and then of course the next night we're now here at cracker Barrel in Coeur d'Alene. so you never know what's going to happen it's not all it is not all like scenic vistas and beautiful um you know parked out in the middle of the wilderness but sometimes i gotta tell you it, the, the funniest most interesting things happen not necessarily camped in beautiful places in the woods and we all like those places of course but like last night as an example we had like a a little mini I'll call it a little mini get together of people that were camped here at the Cracker Barrel. There were people in RVs and vans and we're all getting together in the parking lot last night. So you can't make this stuff up. Um, in any case, I'm, I'm all over the place on the podcast here. But well, um, the, the, the thing that sticks out to me in that story is because uh, I'm researching uh, stats and information for a future podcast that we're going to be having a, in a week or two about uh, nomads, uh, and how I was having a conversation with some neighbors that were telling me that, uh, you know, van people and full time on the road people, they pretty much, they pretty much generalize them as being hippies yeah. and, and not contributing to, uh, the economy. But just in just in the past few days, you talked about a, a motorcycle purchase. Uh, <laughs> you know, we spent five thousand dollars on a motorcycle and an ice cream machine. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I'm not going to give away our next right. show, but the the quick answer is nomads absolutely contribute to the economy, and if you itemize, they may even be contributing more. Yeah. Uh, the, and the other thing I want to, before we move on, is mention, um, you know, because we we talk a lot about all of this stuff. Uh, certainly, is the um, uh, the news cycle that's been going on. Um, you know, the the the, the country is at, at a. L- let me just say this. Say it. <laughs> I mean, we were probably think about this. We were probably less than three millimeters away from a potential civil war or something. We, we had an assassination attempt on a former president who is the, obviously the Republican nominee. If that had killed him, I don't know what we would be talking about on this podcast right now. I don't know either, bro. I don't I mean, know it's, either. It's, and, and no matter what side you're on, like that is obviously not acceptable in a in a quote first world country um in, in any kind of political environment to be t- trying to shoot people so um you know i i was i was actually very happy to see both sides came out very quickly and said this is this is not cool and um you know where we go from here uh, it's going to be interesting to watch the next three months to see what happens. You know, uh, I watched a little bit of the uh, Republican uh, National Convention last night on television. And I, you know, uh, the, the feeling was completely different. I mean, here you go. You, you got your major candidate coming out with, you know, an ear bandage that was, you know, a quarter of an inch from his brain. And uh, it, I, the vibe was just amazing, to be honest with you. Um, they played uh, the long version of proud to be America when he was coming out. It sure did. I mean, it was like a 20 minute version. And, um, I'll tell you, and, and this is, don't do not take this politically, but I was 
super excited to see that there was somebody nominated for vice president that's 39 years old. Um, you know, and and and, and that's taking a, take the politics right out of it. You've heard me preach about this before, man. I wish, to be honest with you, I wish all four uh, the presidential candidates and vice presidential candidates were all 39 years old. But it, it is great to see some younger blood and younger generation. Um, I'm excited to see that and see where that goes. We spoke about this. You know, I I, I actually think there needs to be an age limit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, uh, that's all I really want to say about that. Uh, You know, we would be we would be from our past podcasts of talking about politics. um, You know, I'll say one more thing. It it is uh, our prediction on the uh, maybe it wasn't the last podcast, but a couple ago where we said that Biden was going to be out by the um, by his convention. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see whether this and and this is a figment of or or, uh, maybe it's a statement on our on our news and our politics and our culture. But the news cycles switch so fast. So the fact that this happened and we had talked about like, oh, all of a sudden Donald Trump's not in the news at all. It was all Biden. And now, of course, it's almost completely reversed. Um, It'll be interesting to see how that affects whether or not he stays in, stays out, or or what goes on behind the scenes. Okay, so do you remember what my exact prediction was? I said I was uh, that if he didn't uh, go out to be worried about what they do to change the uh, where the tension was. You remember, I, I said yeah. maybe it would be a possible war or something like that. So yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Wow. We sure got but one that. thing I do want to speak about, Mike, about that is what's bothering me most about this more than anything else is political correctness is just making me want to throw up. And let me tell you a little story. You saw my last post. I made up I made a post where a lady is carrying is carrying a flag and running through the fields. And then it, it switches to a shot of the American flag. And all I say in my Instagram is we're all in, t- in this together. I saw that. Right. Yes. So that, that should be pretty much a, a unanimous sentiment, no matter what. Would you agree on that? I would absolutely agree. Well, what I noticed is high volume of people watched the video. But the percentage of people who commented and liked the video was was extremely low. And here's the thing. I had more DMs on that post than I've ever gotten before, where people were saying what they thought or what they interpreted from what I posted. So it's amazing to me that people are very opinionated, but they won't speak. And their opinions are things that they shouldn't be ashamed of. They Some people were just like, yeah, it's crazy that it happened. Yeah, I hope he's okay. But they're scared to say that in a, compl- in a comment? Yeah, I know. It's interesting. I mean, unfortunately, that it is... It was considered controversial, my post. Yeah. That's wild. That is wild. Yeah, it, should, it, it shouldn't be. Because because obviously, you know, we'll leave it at that. We are all in this together. Uh, you know, it is it is one collective country and we've got to uh, we've got to come together and, you know, we're going to disagree on a lot of different things. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I firmly believe um, regardless of who wins the election, as an example, that the country is fundamentally going to change. Either way, M- meaning that, like, we are still all human, so I'm not going to, you know, because it was, it was, it was obviously people that are like, you know, if Biden gets elected, uh, he's senile, the thing's going to go to crap and whatever. I mean, right, wrong or different. I, I you know, there, there's a lot of people involved in this running this thing. And the same thing on the other side, people are like, oh, if Donald Trump gets uh, elected, the, uh, democracy is over. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> I mean, that's just bullshit. Um, c- clear and simple. That's just a load of garbage. That's just a talking point. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can see above that. I think the intelligent people 
are not saying stuff like that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of dumb people out there. And when you get to my age, you've heard so many candidates over decades always say, this is the most important election of your life. If we make a mistake with this one, the, the democracy may be over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. So what are we going to do next, Phil? Well, Mike, some people, if, if people enjoy following our uh, travels and the things that we do and whatever, this is going to be good news. And for those who don't, this is going to be bad news. They're going to see more of us together real soon. That's right. So I'm on my way already towards, um, and you know how I travel at the speed of backwards. <laughs> um, uh, I'm in Coeur d'Alene. I am about uh, 340 miles, I believe, from the destination, which I figure it will take me another two to three days. Um, we're planning on, uh, we, we are heading towards a small town called Three Forks in Montana. It's just uh, uh, west of Bozeman. And we're heading to the X Overland Ranch Grand Opening. So Expedition Overland has, I believe it's a 400 acre uh, ranch that they are sort of, uh, we got invited to. And it's a, sort of a big grand opening event. Well, it's, uh, it's currently the big deal. It's the it ticket to go to. It's the thing to, that's go. It's what's happening right now. It's the place mm -hmm. to go. It's the hot ticket. And I'm excited to go. I'm excited to hang out with you again. And we are going to do our best to give anyone who follows us on social media uh, a very good idea of what it's all about. Right. Both the uh, the uh, personal people side of it and uh, the view of the ranch and, and sort of the life in Montana. And hopefully uh, we're going to get uh, Clay and Rachel uh, on the podcast and talk to those guys about what their plans for X Overland um, uh, is uh, and what the uh, what this ranch is all about, because it certainly looks super cool. And it looks like we're going to be able to drive some uh, Toyotas through a pretty cool off road course. Yeah, uh, I believe Toyota is very he heavily represented from consumers and then uh, from the actual company itself. That's right. So really looking forward to it. And unfortunately, um, the, the uh, you're thinking that we're going to be in Montana, particularly in Western Montana, you're thinking, wow, wow, the weather's going to be great. It's going to be cool. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be hot still. Everywhere I go, it's hot. Isn't Montana where that that saying came from? Wait a few minutes for the weather and it'll change or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll see. You, you can't uh, depend on Montana weather. You can depend on it changing. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned one interview, but if things go the way we plan, there's going to be a who's who list of people there from all over the world and yep. don't want to divulge and, and partially because we don't fully know who those people will be, but we're, we will absolutely be having other interviews of people that you're curious about. And if you've ever seen us do our interviews, you will get a look at these people that you generally don't get in other interviews. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I, uh, I do know that there's a, it's a quite a bit of people, uh, in attendance that are coming to this thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think it's going to be, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, I, I know it's going to be fun. Uh, I cannot imagine clay making a move like this and not having every bell and whistle for the event. Exactly. So uh, for those of you out there that are listening to us that probably follow, and we've talked about this on other podcasts that follow X Overland. I mean, they very well, probably if I had to take, uh, if you had to ask me what are three of the, the, the biggest entry points into the world of overlanding, X Overland is definitely one of them. I think, I think for many people, it may be their first point of entry into the, whole community of overlanding uh comes through that they produce a uh, sort of their own i guess you would call it our own tv network and 
some of their obviously their production value is is incredible. So um, I'm sure there, we've got a lot of listeners out there that are following along with X Overland already. If you're not, you should be. Well, Mike, even other people that people follow, we've had them on the podcast. We've interviewed them. We ask who they are inspired by. And Expedition Overland is one of the top three names that we continually over and over hear people say that was their that was their entry point into learning about overlanding, being inspired. So, yeah, these are the big boys. That's right. So I'm kind of excited going uh, going to be entering. Actually, I'm hitting the road here shortly and we're making our way probably to Missoula tonight. So uh, be entering into my adopted home state of Montana today. So I'm kind of excited about that as well. I haven't been up here in a while. If you guys weren't on a timeline, I'd tell you to stay right where you are for at least a day. And you're in a nice area, bro. Oh, absolutely. Well, so like I said, at the top of the show, I'm planning on staying in the Montana, Northern Idaho area, largely until I make my way down to Colorado for the um, uh, Overland Expo Mountain West show, uh, which is towards the end of August. Well, now that I've officially gotten my media badge, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'll announce that that I'll be there right there with you. We'll be doing uh, coverage. We have some ideas to do some new things that you haven't seen us do before. I've been working on a game show since the beginning of this podcast that I think we might be ready to implement during a podcast. I don't want to tell more because it seems like people who don't admit to watching or listening do because our ideas end up other places that's right when we give too much detail well i'm looking forward to that so we got a lot coming up i mean this is all think about it today is what is today july 16th right mm -hmm. so all of this is really actually we're now we're really talking about the next five weeks or so because we've got this event coming up uh thursday at x overland and then um you know a few weeks go by and before you know it we've got to head to colorado so a lot going going on yeah today's podcast was pretty much duty for us uh we could have it would have been far more convenient for us to cancel this week's podcast uh with all of the stuff that we we need to do this week but um we love doing the podcast with you guys we don't want to miss out and then the other thing is um we've got some pretty big guests coming up uh, that we've got lined up over the next uh, little bit as well. So looking forward to talking to some uh, people that you would, you were definitely going to want to hear from. So Mike, give them at least one name. <laughs> you want me to I give wasn't going to say anything. I like to wait till we <laughs> actually do the interview to tell them. But well, I'll give you one. I'll give you one name. Graham. <laughs> okay. That? So Mike is being funny because we have two Grams. very well-known world travelers and they're both named Graham. That's right. So you guys can figure out who those people are. Well, they're both they're both going to be on the show, so you don't even have to figure it out. That's right. So you got two for one. Yep. Well, Mike, is there anything else you want to say? Oh, looking forward to this week and, um, you know, get out there and adventure if you're not. Um, you know, I, I've been I've been enjoying my last. I've still got my uh, just to give you the update here. I still got my arm brace on. I can still not have, feel all of my fingers, but it's improving day day to day. So it has gotten better. And uh, in fact, when we went to get uh, Reyes and Deidre's motorbike, uh, since I, I own one already, I did take it for a little test drive. So I know I can ride a, a motorbike if I have to. So that's definitely improved. Mike, you need to let that go for a minute because your hand, you still not clutching fast. No, probably not. But I just did a little tour around the neighborhood there. No BDRs yet. Well, guys, this is a short one. Uh, we didn't want to miss a week. And we did want to give you some updates to let you know what's coming up and to stay tuned because we've got a lot ahead of us. Big stuff ahead of us. And in the short term, not not far off, but 
in the following week. So stay tuned for more. Sounds good. All right, Mike, if you don't have anything else to say, I'm going to close it out. This is going to be at one of our, this is, this is probably the record shortest podcast we've ever done. I think our last one might have been the record longest. Oh, wow. If I told people that we literally cut out an hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you know what I'm going to say. Stay safe, tread lightly, and hopefully we'll see you here on a trail soon. You have been listening to Waypoint Overland's Random Waypoints. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.